All right. Hello, everyone. Come on around here. Welcome. Welcome to Kids Week 2022 at the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum. Welcome. Also, hello to everyone tuning in from home today. My name is Alicia. I work here at the Intrepid Museum, and we are so thrilled to welcome you all back here on site again for our Kids Week Festival. Welcome. Round of applause for that. <laughs> Excellent. So as you may know, we've got a lot of exciting things going on today. We've got a number of wonderful partners who are joining us today for a whole family of fun here. Uh, also, you may not know this, but the Intrepid is actually home to 28 of the world's fastest airplanes. We've also got a Cold War era submarine right outside on the pier that you can explore. Also right above our heads right now, we've got a space shuttle, the space shuttle Enterprise, one of a kind. And underneath it, has anyone been up there yet? Have you seen anything exciting up there? Yeah, the Mars Perseverance Rover and Ingenuity Helicopter full-scale models. So if you haven't seen it yet, be sure to get up there and check those out before you leave today. Very, very exciting. Now, everyone, uh, I just want to say here, too, we are starting you off with a special treat, if I do say so myself. Uh, the Intrepid is really, really keen on education, all right? Education is very important to us here, but it's not just cool things about planes and space and stuff. We do that as well, but we also really... I think it's important to bring a lot of the humanity behind the hardware as well. We really like to bring to life the stories of a lot of the people that served here, as well as some of the history around the era as well. So today, we thought that we would actually kick this off for you with a little demonstration on how sailors on ships, just like the Intrepid, had some fun. Because it's all about fun, right? All about fun this week, absolutely. So we're just going to go ahead and dive right in for you. All right, so allow us to introduce ourselves. Hi, I'm Jim. Hi, I'm Charles. And once again, I am Alicia. Now, you know, years ago, way back in the 1940s, when this ship was built, cell phones, computers, you know, those things weren't even invented yet. And if someone wanted to hear news or music, they didn't have TV or podcasts, right? They didn't even have MP3s or CDs or cassette tapes or eight tracks. Was any, any of you around for eight tracks, maybe? <laughs> In those days, everyone, they listened to the radio. Now, some of you might still listen to the radio today. Radio has actually been around for 100 years, over 100 years, believe it or not. But back then, it sounded and worked uh, a bit differently. Music and entertainment were either performed live or recorded on one of these. Yeah. All right. So take a look at this. Does anyone know what this thing is here? What do you think? Shout it out for us. What is this? A record, that's right, a record. So everyone, people would actually record music on something like this, a record, and they would listen to record albums played on a record player, just like this one. Now, during wartime, like when Intrepid was off at sea, these records would often be sent off to ships and military bases with variety shows on them, music, stories, and news from home, all to be played over the airwaves on the radio. The Intrepid even had its own radio station, W-I-N-T, during its later years in service. Soldiers and sailors would crowd around the radio, especially when they missed their loved ones, listening to the songs and sounds of home. So we thought it might be fun to recreate one of those early radio shows for you today. But there is just one thing, everyone. What's really special about the radio is that you couldn't see anything, okay? You actually had to use your imagination a bit. So we use your imaginations with us, but of course you are going to get a little bit of help from the magic of sound effects. Just like today, when you might watch a movie or play a video game, the sounds you hear, things like footsteps, rustling grass, flapping wings, and punches, they were all recorded in a studio, sometimes even made with surprising objects. So everyone, close your eyes for us for a second. That's what you think this sounds like. What's it sound like? Horses, right? Yeah, horse hooves. And these are just coconut shells. And how about this one? Mm. Yeah, shout it out. That is what's called a rain stick, and it sounds just like a rainstorm. And actually, everyone, you all can create a rainstorm with us right here, right now, too. So everyone, start off by rubbing your hands together like this. 
right? So now it's starting to come just a little bit light. Now everyone switch to snapping. Now the rain's picking up a little bit. All right, now everyone go ahead and slap your thighs like this. Oh, it's really building up now, isn't it? And harder, harder, it's really coming down. And now Jim's gonna throw in some thunder for us. Jim, keep going, keep going. Ooh, hear that crash of thunder. All right, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. Let's switch back to the snaps again. All right, and just the hands rubbing together again. And cut! All right, everyone, give yourselves a round of applause. That was an amazing rainstorm that we just made together. Great. So sound effects like these are made by people with jobs called Foley artists. And we're going to be demonstrating a bit of that for you here today. Throughout the show, you'll hear us make sound effects with lots of different objects. But we might need your help occasionally too. For instance, what do you think you should do if you see this sign? They got it. All right, all right, and what do you think you should do if you see this sign? <laughs> oh, you guys are good. All right, excellent. Well, I think they've got it. Should we get started? All right. All right, everyone. So enough of our blabbering. Let's kick off the show, Sound, shall we? Here we go, everyone. Help count us down. And we're on in five, four, three, two, one. Well, gee, just listen to that studio audience. Aren't they swell? Hiya, fellas. This is G.I. Jill with a special edition of our radio program, G.I. Jive. And a warm welcome to our live studio audience today. Glad that you all are here with us. All right. Now, as always, everyone, let me know what you want to hear by dropping me a line via V-mail. All right. Care of G.I. Jive Armed Forces Radio. And use V-mail if you can, fellas. Victory. It gets there a lot faster and it saves a lot on shipping space for vital war materials, too. Well, the jukebox is standing on its sea legs today because this session of GI Jive is dedicated to the United States Navy. That's right, sailors, anchors away. Just lean that swab against the nearest bulkhead and stay tuned to hear the continuing saga of Frankie and Franny, Travelers Through Time, a highlight from the hit parade, updates from the state fair, and so much more. Now, to kick things off, we hear a lot about those Navy pilots who are doing such a fine job at keeping the enemy out of the skies. But today, let's say a word for all those sailors who keep those planes flying high. All the mechanics, the ordnance men, the gunners, the radio men. You know, over the Solomon Seas, ground crews were able to keep planes flying even though Japanese snipers were covering the runways. And on carriers, well, those blue jackets patched bullet holes with adhesive tape, working night and day to get those planes back in the air, too. So let's give a salute to the ground boys. Of course, without them, we wouldn't have chalked up all those victories over the axis. Don't touch that dial. It's time for, it's time for another episode in the continuing saga of Frankie and Franny, Travelers Through Time. Brought to you by the fine folks at Colgate Toothpaste. It cleans your breasts while it cleans your teeth. Mm. Part of a top secret defense program, Frankie and Franny travel through the centuries in an experimental time machine, gathering knowledge in the hope of bringing peace to the world. Psst, kids, do you have your Ovaltine decoder rings ready? Today's word is communication. Each time you hear a word that has to do with communicating, like listen or talk or write, give it two snaps to decipher today's secret message. We now join Frankie and Franny as they discuss today's secret mission. Morning, Franny. Come on in. It's about time you showed up. You close that door. The wind is awful today. Oh, Frankie, I'm so sleepy. I stayed up half the night studying for my Spanish test. Oh, I should have been studying each night instead of cramming at the last minute. What was I thinking? Oh, Franny, you should have listened when the teacher told you when the test was. It's even been written on the blackboard for three weeks. Jeez. I know, I know. You don't have to rub it in. I get the picture. <laughs> so where are we heading today, huh? Oh, Paris, France. Oh, the pyramids of Egypt. Or oh, how about Mount Everest or the South Pole? Oh, you know, I'd love to go on an excavation with some dinosaurs. Stop right there. We already have our assignment. First, we have to go to Lake Champlain in the 1700s to observe 
fur traders, and then back to the year oh, 1100. Champlain! Oh, I'd love a glass of champlain. So we are going to Paris, France, aren't we? <laughs> no, silly. Lake Champlain in upstate New York. During the 1700s, most of the people who lived there were French fur traders and Native Americans. Our mission is to find the trading post and figure out how they were able to communicate without speaking the same language. You can learn a lot about people just by observation. Like their clothes? Sure. For instance, if you met me for the first time, what would you think about me just by looking at my clothes? <laughs> well, with that pocket protector and those nerdy sweater vests, I'd say that you kind of look like a science geek. That's right. W wait. Well, uh, I mean, I I'm not a geek, but I do love science. Anyway, we've got to get going. Here's your costume. <gasps> oh, wow. This hat is so mean. It's white straw brim is perfect for summer, and the flowers and the ostrich feather on top makes quite a statement. You can get one just like it at Gimbel's this week for only $3.99. Would you look at the time? We've got to hurry if we're going to stay on schedule. Okay, systems check. Uh, security lights? Uh, uh, check. The time antimatter displacement field? Uh, 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 check. Initial time error position? Check. Uh, oops. What do you mean, oops? Um, well, I, I hit the ignition button instead of the time error position button. I, uh, uh, Frankie, what do we do? Where are we going? Uh, oh, well, look out the window. I've never seen this before. What kind of landscape is this? Keep your head on your shoulders. I'm trying to find out where we are. I, uh, wait a minute. Oh, no. What? 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 Frankie, what? Not what, Franny. Where? Okay, where? Where on earth are we? Well, that's just it. The time error position system was preset for our third mission. We're not on Earth. We're on Mars. Mars? That's all for today. What or who will Frankie and Franny find on the planet Mars? Will they make it back in time for the Spanish test? Will Franny have the right hat to blend in on Mars? Tune in tomorrow for the exciting conclusion of Frankie and Franny, Travelers Through Time. Ladies, are your hands cracked and raw from days on the line of the defense plant? Are the endless hours on the riveter <laughs> freaking havoc on your skin? We have the answer. Jergens lotions for soft, adorable hands. Now in a handy purse-sized bottle. And now a report from your national news. Dateline USA, February 15, 1942. With men serving in the military overseas, a vast civilian labor force has been mobilized at home. Two million women have entered the workforce with Rosie the Riveter as their national symbol. Victory gardens are springing up in backyards and vacant lots. Last year, 40% of all vegetables in the nation came from 20 million gardens. Americans are hoeing and hoping for victory. Speaking of that, we've got another tune coming up dedicated to all of those hardworking women over at the shipbuilding facility in Newport News, Virginia. I hear they're building something really intrepid. Now, you all out there in our studio audience, we are going to need your help for this next one. When I say Rosie and point at you, I want you all to make that sound you just heard, all right? That <laughs> sound, all right? Can you try that with us, Rosie? <laughs> All right, great, great. So here we go, everyone. Here it is, topping this year's 1942 hit parade. This is Rosie, Rosie the Riveter. All the day long, whether rain or shine, she's a part of the assembly line. She's making history, working for victory. Rosie, the Riveter, keeps a sharp lookout for sabotage. Way up there on the fuselage, that little friend can do more than the men can do. Rosie, the Riveter, Rosie's got a boyfriend, Charlie. Charlie, he's a Marine. Rosie is protecting Charlie, working overtime on the riveting machine. When they gave her a production E, she was as proud as a girl could be. There's something true about red, white, and blue about Rosie. The Riveter, Rosie. The Riveter, Rosie. The Riveter. All right, great job, everyone, great job.
You're listening to the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education, selling the finest radio programs to the world's finest fighting men overseas. And say, before we get on to this next bit, I'd like to get my $7.50 by adding that if you get your $7.50 in to a GI bond, you're in business. Because that $7.50 brings you $10 every time it matures. So how about it, fellas? Save some Jack for a Jill. And now, a word from the fair. As you may know, the state fair is now in full swing. I'm here at the fair to check out how things are going over at the spitting contest. <laughs> riveting. Just riveting. Back to you. Uh, thanks for that. Now, say, fellas, here's a new one. Navy airmen found a clever way to return their empty soda glass bottles when they dropped them from overhead onto the decks of Japanese ships. Pilots of 15 Marine Scout planes did it at night to trick the gunners into firing and revealing their positions, and then the United States PT boats swam in close and unloaded their torpedoes by the light of gunfire. Hey, that reminds me. Did you hear the one about the sailor who got hit in the head with a soda can? No, what happened to him? Ah, uh, he was just fine. It was a soft drink. Oh, <laughs> uh, that joke was so depressing. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, well, as that one fizzes out, in other news, a sailor all the way over in Iceland wrote to us here at GI Jive and said that the Eskimos in that country use fish for money. Yeah, he said it worked fine, but uh, got pretty messy when he tried to make a phone call from a payphone. <laughs> hey, you know what? My dad was a fisherman. Really? Yeah, but he quit because his net income wasn't enough. Oh. Gee, it sounds like his work made him sell fish. Oh, right. All right, all right you two. Maybe we should scale back on those fish puns. No? I think they're fantastic. Okay, give me, give me the sign. Give me the sign. Give me the yeah, this is actually a great <laughs> opportunity oh, to try out some new jokes. <laughs> hey, why are fish so smart? They live in schools. Oh, right. Except for that one that f***ed out because he was below sea level. Oh, oh, I've got another one. Why should you never fight an octopus? Because he's too well-armed. Uh. <laughs> yes, everyone, keep your friends close and your anemones closer. And since we're broadcasting on the radio, what is the best type of music to listen to while you're fishing? Something, Something catchy! catchy. Hey. <laughs> All right, everyone, we'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsor. Stomach upset? Rich foods can do a number on your digestion. Hospital tests prove Pepto-Bismol works where soda and alkalizers fail. Not in the stomach, but in the many, many feet of intestines below the stomach where trouble often occurs. Take hospital-tested Pepto-Bismol after your big meal and feel good again. <sighs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome everybody's favorite neighborhood know-it-all. It's time for Gavin with Granny Gertrude. So, Gertrude, tell me, what's going on in your neighborhood these days? Oh, I wouldn't think of gossiping. You know what they say, loose lips sink ships. Oh, well, that is mighty patriotic of you. All right, what should we talk about then? Um, oh, I know, you love motion pictures. So who's your favorite movie star? Oh, let me think a minute now. It'll come to me. I know, that cute little thing they're calling the It Girl. Uh, who's that, uh, Judy Garland? Sure. I love her because we have so much in common. So much in common? Do you mean you were in moving pictures when you were young? Oh, dearie me, no. The only moving pictures they had when I was young was when the dog ran off with the family portrait. No, I mean the it part. Judy is the it girl, and I'm the one who used to have it, girl. Oh, <laughs> Uh, Granny, you're a caution. All right, tell me, how are you handling the wartime shortage of nylons? Oh, I have plenty. But you know what those young girls do when they run out? They draw lines up the back of their legs with the hair eye pencil, so it looks like they're wearing stockings. <laughs> well, it, you know, it looks like maybe you should uh, give up your nylons to someone a little bigger. Uh, yours look kind of baggy and wrinkled. I'm not wearing nylons. <laughs> Well, sorry about that, Gertrude. Um, so your children, they're all grown up and out of the house, and uh, you've been a widow now for how many years? 22 years and three quarters. Oh, wow. Well, have you started seeing anyone new? As a matter of fact, I had a date last night. Oh, how did it go? 
I had to slap him three times. Oh, dear. He got fresh with you? No, I had to wake him up. <laughs> well, gosh, Gertrude, I'd love to stay longer at the... Uh, the clock on the wall tells me it's time to say goodbye. And that actually goes for you all, too, out there in Radio Land there. Yeah, so time to put this session in dry, Doc. All ashore till next time. Thanks for tuning in, and be sure to set your dial for the same time next week. Until then, this is your GI gal, Jill, saying good morning to some of you, good afternoon to some more of you, and to the rest of you, good night. <laughs> And we're off. All right, everyone. Give yourselves another round of applause. What a great job you all did. Thank you so much for helping us to make our radio show. This was just a glimpse into what radio programming was like in the 1940s. And you can see just how much joy it brought families and soldiers around the world, wherever they were. So from our family to yours, thanks so much for being a great studio audience. <laughs> Happy Kids Week, everyone. Thank Happy you so much for Thank joining you. us. Now, everyone, hope you enjoyed that fun little presentation here. We are part of the Intrepid's education and programming team. And everyone, I just want to remind you, we've got so much other fun stuff going on here today. Be sure to check out all of our amazing partners. We've got animals. We've got a Broadway show over here. So many fun things going on. All right. Now, don't forget, though, coming up here at one o'clock, we have another very special presentation from none other than the Gazillion Bubble Show. Is anyone excited for some bubbles? I yeah. Am. All right. So, everyone, we'll see you all right back here at 1 o'clock. And that goes for you all tuning in from home, too. See you back here. Happy Kids Week, everyone. Happy Kids Week. Happy Kids Week. <laughs>